Hey there everybody, Atlas here, and today I'll be doing a review for SoccerCon 2018. Just uh, letting you guys know what I was up to and uh, what I thought about it. Alright, so for this review I'm just kind of going to be going down the line one at a time of uh, things I thought did and didn't go well. Why not start at the beginning? Um, registration. So... For registration, we uh, we got there pretty early on Thursday. We pre-registered, obviously. Um, I got there pretty early, but we decided to hang out with a group of friends. You know, Jay and I usually meet up ahead of time and go there together for registration. And, well, we decided to wait till around 7 or so to go, hoping people would have been through by then. You know, most people get there early. Well, <laughs> We got there a little late, about 7.30, and the line was kind of ridiculous for that time of night. Uh, I expected it to be pretty much dead that time of day, that most people would have gone through early, but no, it was actually really packed. That being said, we actually got through pretty quick. Um, as far as the line itself, I think it was maybe 25 minutes, half hour at most, which, for how many people, was actually really good. I expected it to be a lot longer. Uh, as for the staff running it, I mean, I got up there and they were practically throwing my badge at me. I mean, they were really fast. I gave them my ID, and within about a minute, maybe minute and a half, I'd already been asked, okay, how was the wait? How's your day been going? I hope you enjoyed the con. And I already had my bag, my goodie ba or my badge, and my goodie bag and was out the line. <laughs> they uh, they were pretty fast, honestly. If they weren't being so darn polite about it and stopping to talk a little, they probably would have had me through an app at the time, which is still pretty impressive. Uh, they actually had it together really well this year. They had one person that took my ID, another person getting the badge and bag together. It was really smooth. Uh, other than that, I really didn't have that much of an interaction with the con staff this year. Uh, I didn't really go to any of the lines for celebrity autographs or anything. I did go to a couple panels, and the staff working the lines were, you know, they were polite. They did pretty well, but it's a pretty simple thing, too. So, the lines went well. I went to both the Zap Brannigan panels. They were a lot of fun. If you haven't been to one of the Zap Spaceship of Love panels, I'd definitely check it out. It's ridiculous, and over the top, and usually a good time. But anyways, the staff working those events did pretty well for the lines and for the setup and everything. The people checking the 18-plus stamp for the second one got through pretty quickly because, you know, at least one of the Zap Spaceship of Love panels are always 18-plus every year. At, le at least one. <laughs> but um, anyways, they got us through pretty quickly, too. Um, that's really about all I have to say about the, the con staff. Um... Peace bonding, I guess. They were really polite and got through the line pretty quickly. They were being very efficient, but really that's about it. I didn't have to ask for a lot of advice on stuff. I knew my way around pretty well this year. I didn't really have anyone give me any trouble from con staff. That went pretty well. I mean, for the most part, they were all just very friendly and very helpful. That being said, convention center staff, the staff of the building itself, did have a few issues with. For the most part, when I needed something and was asking for advice, they were helpful and they were polite. But then comes the issues of, I suppose, the convention center policies. So, usually there's areas where people hang out in the hallways off to the side, like by the windows that lead out by the court, or the, the courtyard. Normally, I've been going there, this is my third year in a row and fourth overall, I've never seen anybody kicked out of that space before. Usually people even sit across from those windows by the escalators on the outside of them on that wall that's, uh, you know, opposite the... Or not opposite, but on the other side of the wall that borders the uh, escalators. And people usually sit there, too. We've even had people sit down and play music. Last year there's a guy playing saxophone, playing things like the Cowboy Bebop theme, of course. Never had a problem. This year, not only did they tell us, hey, you can't sit there, but they were not polite about it. I mean, from what I've heard, a few people had them come up and be like, hey, you know, you can't be here, you gotta move. 
but when me and some friends were sitting there, all we got was, Hey, you can't sit there, get up and move. I mean, really? I understand that we're not supposed to be there. Okay, maybe that's a new policy, maybe they didn't enforce it before, but there are a heck of a lot more polite ways to do it than shouting across the room. One of the other problems I had, and I don't know if this was con policy or if the conventions their staff didn't understand what was going on or what, but day zero, Thursday, the day before, I was told I could not use any of the bathrooms above the first floor without a badge, even in the mornings. I was told I couldn't go certain areas that were considered con space, even though it was literally a walkway from one door to get in to another one to get out, so you didn't have to walk outside if it was raining or anything, or to go to one of the concession stands. I couldn't even go to a concession stand on Thursday. Like, the main area in front of main events, where they have that little food booth if you've ever been there, yeah, you couldn't go in those doors to get in from the courtyard without a badge, and you couldn't get in from the main area. On day zero, before the convention began. If they didn't want anybody in there because they were setting up, maybe I could understand. But no, they were letting people with badges through, even though there was no official event going on and it should have still been considered public space. I honestly kind of doubt that was convention policy so much as the people saw signs and just enforced them, even though the signs that said prohibited without a badge were probably intended to be enacted and enforced on Friday, not day zero. I really don't think they care on day zero that you're going into a bathroom on the third floor instead of the bathroom on the first, which is public. Which, by the way, if you are at the convention center and you have a badge, do not use them. I have found things on the floor in there that you do not want to see. And I did not appreciate being forced to use those for the entire day until going through, uh, through the uh, registration line. Granted, if I'd gotten there early and gone through the line, it wouldn't have been an issue. I get that. The problem is, why the heck are they barring people from going into what should be public space before the convention has begun? That makes no sense to me. I get having con-only space during the convention, obviously, they rent it out. But on Thursday? Really? I don't think that's what the convention had in mind when they put those signs up. I really don't. <sighs> this next one is kind of a pain. It was an issue with... The hotel. I always try and mention that if I'm going to do a review or, or talk about what went well and what didn't. Yeah, so we were staying at the Renaissance. This one's not going to be fun, by the way. Overall, our experience staying in the room wasn't too bad. We needed a few things like plates. Okay, they brought them up quickly. We needed help unloading our cart when we got there. They helped. Okay, the bellhop was polite. But then we went to pick up our stuff on Sunday. Okay. So it took them a while to find it, for starters. A, kind of a ridiculously long time, but I get it. Maybe they're just that busy, that full. But that took them a long time. We had to have our taxi waiting for us, so they found it. Thankfully, it wasn't too long. So... We get back to Jay's. I, I uh, met up, or we went back there, and then I drove from his place the next day back home. So, you know, I stayed there. So that's where we went and unloaded our stuff in the taxi. We're unloading, and we realize we have a few things missing. He had a pallet, or not a pallet, but a little cardboard tray, like the, the packages of energy drinks, the wired. He had over half of one of those left. I had a box containing various soups and ramen and, you know, other foods, and a second box full of an entirely unopened bag of chips, one that had been barely used, and some other various snack goods, crackers and things. They weren't there. So we thought, okay, what happened? You know, we know we put it on the, ho or on the cart. We know it was there when we dropped it off. We double-checked. We looked at everything. Part of the reason I know it was there is it was literally hold or the box of food was literally holding something else on there when we dropped the cart off. It was literally helping prop something up so it wouldn't fall off. Oh, I also had a blanket on there, too, that went missing. But we decided to get down to the bottom of this. We called the hotel. And first of all, they sent us, or they or transferred us to Lost and Found. That makes sense, okay? They had to call around to a few different people to find out where it was. 
Now that alone sounds suspect, doesn't it? If it was in Lost and Found, they would have had it. Where else would it have been, right? Well, they call around a few places and then finally call us back. And that's when we find out, oh, well, we found it sitting on the curb on your cart that you didn't return to us and left sitting on the curb by where your taxi was. Hmm, well, that's interesting because, you know, we had Hardy holding the cart for us so it didn't roll down the hill while we unloaded on or into the taxi. And right before he personally took the cart in, which I sat and watched, he stopped and asked, okay, is that everything? Is there anything else left? We checked the hangers, the bars up top. Nothing. Checked the bottom, which, you know, is an open, flat piece of metal with carpet on it. There's no way you could possibly mistake three boxes and a blanket as being sitting right there. There's no way you could make a mistake and not notice them. So he stops, asks, okay, is that everything? Is there anything else you need off of this? We say no, say our goodbyes, give him a hug, send him back into the hotel to wait. He was very helpful, very nice, and took the cart in for us. So before we left, we watched and made sure he got it in through the doors and didn't need help. Nothing on the cart. Watched him wheel it into the lobby in front of the concierge desk at the front, and then got in the taxi and left. So why the heck are they telling us that our cart was, one, left unattended on the curb when we personally had somebody take it into them and watch them take it inside, and two, telling us that our food was left on it when we stopped and checked, and we have me, Jay, and our friend Hardy to back us up, and while we can't get a hold of the taxi driver, he did help us unload, and also stopped and made sure, and double-checked and said, is there anything else you need before we leave? That's four people looking at a cart. And you think we didn't see a blanket and three boxes of food? Yeah, something suspicious happened there. I would not stay at the Renaissance again. I would not recommend it. This is the first time we've had anything go missing, but we've also had people that we knew that have either ruined with us or that stayed there losing bags and having to have it shipped after the hotel first tried to convince them that they needed to pay for shipping because they left it behind. Yeah, I've had friends had to argue with that hotel to get them to pay for shipping because they lost it in the storage room. All right, I wanted to bring that out of the way so I can go back to some of the things that I have remembered that I did do there that was a lot of fun trying to end this on a positive note. So the game room. I didn't go in and play too much, but I did go in a little bit and, and played a bit. But it was a lot of fun. There were a lot of people there. It was really busy, which you'd think would be a bad thing because there was a wait. But it was actually a lot of fun watching people do DDR and other ridiculous games. One of my favorite was waiting in line for one of the Zap panels and looking over to see Bojack Horseman on drums. I couldn't see who was on guitar, but somebody wearing another ridiculous mask. And who else but Saitama from One Punch Man dancing and singing for the, the vocal parts. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> the game room's always a good time. But we also had a few friends. Um, uh, one of our friends that we met at Chibi Chibi Con, uh, Rissa Cosplay. Um, I actually... Did I? Yeah, I actually did the interview for our channel, Hellbent Cosplay. Uh, I interviewed her at Chibi Chibi Con. I'll probably put that in the description below as well, because... Yeah, I mentioned it. Why not? But that was the first time we'd met her in person, and we spent a bit of time at Chibi Chibi Con hanging out. Well, this was her first time going to a larger convention at SoccerCon, so we ended up showing her around, helping out a lot, so, or helping, you know, just kind of figure out where things are and deal with a larger convention for the first time. That was a lot of fun. It was kind of interesting, because I haven't been to a convention any larger than what I'm used to in years. I've been going for close to a decade now. It was a lot of fun seeing somebody go to a larger convention for the first time and seeing all the panels and all the cool cosplays that don't go to smaller ones like Chibi Chibi Con. It was a lot of fun hanging out. And then her and her cousin wanted to go to the dance. We don't normally go to the rave. They call it a dance party because they don't want to call it a rave anymore. Jay and I usually don't go to those, but we've started filming in them a little. Well, it was a lot of fun going to hang out, especially when we actually had people to hang out and talk to there instead of just going into film. The rave was actually really cool, and that's what I want to talk about next. That was one of the positive points to end this review on. Okay, some of the DJs, the people announcing on stage were kind of corny with their names and the act, but let's face it, that's like half the fun. It was a lot of fun, too. They, they definitely got the crowd going. 
The music was good. I mean, I don't dance, so it wasn't really my style of music, but there were some really good points. It was a lot of fun to listen as well. We did see some really cool performances there by people just in the crowd that were doing different dances with, you know, props and lights and all that. Um, it was really cool to see. Anyways, I just wanted to bring up the rave because it was a lot of fun, and I wanted to end this on a positive note because I really didn't have anything else to say after the hotel rant. Sorry that went on for so long. But other than that, I really didn't have anything else to say about the convention because that's really all we did. We hung out, we got video, we got pictures, spent time with friends, didn't really go to any of the panels besides the Zap Spaceship of Love ones. I went to two of those. They were a blast, of course. But, um, I didn't go to any of the celebrity panels, unfortunately. I wanted to, not just the autographs, but even the panels they hosted, but I got busy switching cosplays and doing all that, but it was a lot of fun. And I actually did have a lot of fun with those cosplays that I was changing into. So, if you saw my previous video about my lineup, I mentioned that I was doing Sword Art Online, then a joke version of Sora and Roxas with Jay. Well, we ended up not doing Sora and Roxas. He got really sore and really tired after Sword Art Online and decided not to. So I ended up doing Shugo Saturday and Sunday, which is why I didn't make the Micah Solo Sound autographs on Saturday. Because it took way longer than expected for Shugo. Yeah, to get into that one, all the makeup and everything. The other thing with that is, uh, I forgot part of the costume. I forgot the little white scarf that goes around his neck. Luckily for me, Hardy, while I was doing Mario Odyssey Wedding Mario, he was doing Wedding Suit Bowser. And the tux he bought came with a, a cummerbund, you know, the little belt that goes around your waist that they wear. Well, he didn't use it. He didn't need it. It didn't fit him. So I was able to wrap that around my neck and use that instead and just pin it in the back and nobody noticed. <laughs> Thank goodness. Because without that, I really wouldn't have been able to wear that costume. It didn't look quite as big as it should have been with the normal one, but it worked. And I'm glad it did because that costume was actually really popular and I love it. Anyways, yeah, that's, that's about it for this review. So, as usual, um, yes, I would recommend SoccerCon for both first-time cosplayers, or convention goers even, just pace yourself if it's your first time, it can get a little overwhelming. <laughs> Anyways, yes, yeah, so that is it for this review, I hope you enjoyed it, um, I hope you listened to the warning about the hotels just a little bit, maybe, I wouldn't trust their renaissance again, but uh, anyways, I hope you found some of the info helpful, or at least amusing, alright, well, uh, that's it for this video. This is Atlas, rolling out.